The A1 Unicorn was launched in China on December 31st and would seemingly have gone unnoticed here, but it has something interesting that may or may not appeal to many people, which I've noticed. Actually, I don't know if it's that useful. Anyway, the link to buy it is in the description in case you're interested. So let's see what the hell it is. This device stands out for its unusual design, which includes a 4-inch square screen with a resolution of 720 by 720 pixels. The console is powered by a MediaTek Helio G99 processor, supports up to 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage, and operates with an Android-based system. In addition to its unique screen, the console features game controls that include two analog sticks, a D-pad, action buttons, and shoulder triggers. It is also equipped with a 4,500 mAh battery, 18 watch charging support, and has a 6-axis gyroscope for motion controls. The body of the device is made of plastic. It's being marketed at around $220, which is expensive, so let's see what this thing can do. This system on a chip, the Helio G99, has 8 processing cores, 2 of which are 2200 MHz Cortex-A76 and 6 of which are 2000 MHz Cortex-A55, giving it the following raw single-thread and multi-thread performance scores. In addition, the GPU is the Mali G57 MC2 which provides the following score in an 2210 which measures CPU, GPU, RAM and I.O. performance in different scenarios. Based on these results, a Geekbench 6 of 729 in single core and 1979 in multi core suggests that the CPU performs well for emulating older consoles such as PSP, GameCube, and Wii, with limited ability to emulate PS2 satisfactorily. The exact experience may vary depending on the specific game and the emulator's optimizations. A total score of 416,194 in the Antutu test is considered good for a device, especially considering its MediaTek Helio G99 processor, which is a mid-range chipset designed to offer a balance between performance and energy efficiency. To put it into perspective, mid-range devices generally score between 200,000 and 400,000, while high-end devices can exceed 600,000 or more. Remember that PSP emulation, carried out through emulators such as PPSSPP, is relatively light compared to other more advanced consoles. A Geekbench score of 729 in single core is more than enough to emulate most PSP games with good performance. GameCube and Wii emulation, generally done via the Dolphin emulator, can be more demanding, especially for games that require more from the hardware. However, the score obtained in the test should be able to handle many games from these systems in a playable way, with the possibility of adjusting the emulator settings to optimize performance. Now to the PlayStation 2 emulation, done through emulators such as PCSX2, which is notoriously demanding, especially for games that have been optimized specifically for the PS2's unique hardware. The performance indicated could make some games playable, but as suggested, somewhat playable, there may be limitations depending on the specific game and how well it is emulated. Well, enough with the numbers, but you can see that it can perform well up to play too. A new feature of this console is two games on the screen. The dynamic of playing two games at the same time on the screen, known as split screen, is a display technique in computer graphics that consists of dividing the screen into adjacent parts, usually as two or four rectangular areas. Historically, the split screen has been a common feature in console and computer games for two or more players, with notable titles employing a vertical or horizontal division of the screen for two-player games. Examples include racing games such as Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge and Road Rash 2. But on this device, we have a form of multitasking adapted for a portable device. This would allow one game to be on standby and another to be played, switching between them as the user wishes. This is different from the classic split screen, as it is not for playing simultaneously, but rather for switching between active games. The technique described can be a customized software implementation that uses the device's Android-based operating system to run two games in parallel, allowing the user to switch between them. This can be achieved through a system of windows or background applications that keep both games running, 
but only one active and visible on the screen at any given time. However, it is important to note that keeping two games running at the same time can be more demanding on the device's hardware, potentially affecting performance and battery life. So, what do you think of it? It seems okay to me, although this issue of having games on the screen at the same time seems a bit exotic, I don't know. Have your say if you like. So I'm going for it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like and see you next time.